Hi Ivy, welcome to the Feli Khan Show. Thank you for having me finally. <laughs> so uh, Ivy, uh, in 2004, yes. yeah, uh, you were a commissioner That's on right. the uh, Royal Commission to to there you go. Yeah, to enhance, to enhance the operation and management of the Royal Malaysia Police. That's right. So while you were a commissioner, did you uh, investigate or did you did you propose and outline uh, to handle incidences of fatal shootings involving the police? Well, um, I'm going to be a bit sheepish about this because, no, we did not. We really did not. Not, not because we didn't think it was important. Of course, it was very important. But uh, it was a question of resources and we wanted to also focus more on the investigation procedures and to enhance police investigations. We handle a lot about deaths in custody. We were really focused on that. But in terms of actual fatal shootings, to go out there or not to the ground and to look to see where the issues were and where were the gaps in terms of why did a policeman take out his gun and shoot, uh, we did not focus on that at all. Mm. As I said, um, it was more on the investigation procedures because it's already in the report. The report says very often the police, they tend to arrest, you know, and then investigate. And I dare say, you know, if we had gone into the report, into the fatal shootings, we would have said the shooting and then only investigating or building up a case. Mm. Because of course we did have some uh, uh, cases were brought to us. The Amnesty International, in fact, from London, you know, they, they, they came down for a meeting with the police commission and reminded us that there were already fatal shootings. Mm. We're looking at 2003, there were about almost 20 fatal shootings. Mm. So there was quite a number of, we had very good statistics from 2000 to 2003, where we were averaging over 10 to 15 yeah. per year. Yeah, yeah. And um, then we were cases, very specific cases, the Tumpat Massacre, yeah, in, and also, in 1998. yeah, and Big Nace, right? 2003. 2003, who was 17 years old. Mm. That boy was a sixth form boy, and he was, uh, you know, he was he, he was shot by the yeah. police. Yeah, and 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 I think I think that that uh, really brings to mind uh, that a case uh, such as the most recent one being uh, Amnur Rashid. You know, it's it's not an isolated case. It's not the only thing that has not happened. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, and, and and you know it is uh, there are two things right so going back to the, the to the commission's report I mean this report is really you know very important in the report you know we talk about how it's really important to have the inspector general uh, standing orders to make to make to be made public because the standing orders contain information and instructions and protocols as to how to go about investigating and including the rights of of somebody you detained or you want to, if you want to arrest somebody how why you're arresting the person how you, how should, you should investigate and so we thought it was really important that we make it transparent so for instance you and I do not know what is the standard operating Procedure. procedures and standing orders when a, a, you know when a person takes a gun out when a policeman takes a gun out and shoots you know what has come to, you know to, to, to come to arrive at that particular point has he or the group been investigating where are the investigating papers so when they set out a SWAT team to go and look for these people you know what who made, who made the orders uh, upon the shooting who then runs an inquest mm. like in the Tumpat um, in 1998 when the Tumpat um, uh, killings took, took place the shootouts took place it took a lot of advocacy from the bar council to even hold an inquest. Mm. The inquest was only held about two or three years later. Mm. And in the first inquest, they said there was no misadventure, there was not a problem. And then on the instances, the bar council in a higher court then looked at the at, at the actual, um, you know, what happened actually at, at Tumpad where six men were killed. And they found, you know, that all the shots were at the head. And this was very specific. They were, they were, they were going to kill, kill them. And there were no bullets in the vehicles. No, no so, bullet, bullet holes. Bullet holes, sorry. No bullet vehicles. holes. So if there was a shootout and the policemen were in danger, you know, were they really in danger? Because the UN basic human rights principles on, you know, on, on these kind of shootouts and because policemen may have to at some point take a gun and, and, and shoot, it's very clear you only take your gun out when you feel that you, your life mm. is in danger or you're protecting another life. It's a very, very clear mm. principles we need to see whether the IGSOs, the Inspector General's standard uh, operating procedures or standing orders, does it is it in there? Yeah. Why 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 isn't such information being made public? Do you know why? Or you know, the, you know, when we were the commission, uh, some of the discussions were like some of the standing orders that the criminals know about it, then they will know, you know, how we investigate, you know, and you know, but then you know, there okay. were various reasons as to why it was. 
I think there's a certain, there's a kind of a culture of protecting your own. There's a culture of that we know what we're doing. We don't want to share with you how we investigate, why we investigate. You know, we, you know, simple things like you know, we, you, you arrest a person. If you do not take his statement within 24 hours, something is very wrong. But that's a standing order that you have to take a statement within 24 hours. Mm. You know, if you the order that the star was to just keep going back to the magistrate and extending, extending, extending. Now we're a little bit more aware. The moment a person goes into into, into, into detention, at least the Klang Valley, we know if we're not taking down it, my statement you don't need me at mm, all mm, obviously mm. it's not important for me to remain in detention because you're not investigating so I think the reason why some of the standing orders simple things like this including for me I'm really curious to know you take out a gun you pour out some bullets what is the operating procedures what happens after that how many reports do you have to write yeah. who investigates you yeah. um, are you accountable for each? yeah and all of that I think the, the you know the, this kind of information is not transparent mm. and I think I can only hazard a reason to say it's mm. you know it's a culture of you know where you you tend to be very exclusive it's quite elite and you know you don't that, that transparency you know yeah. it's not there let's face it in most of our institutions we don't really know you know what goes, what really goes on Talking about that, uh, the one of the main main uh, proposals of the Royal Commission mm -hmm. uh, in two thousand four was to set up the IPCMC. That's right, and it was the most important recommendation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the, absolutely the most important recommendation. But even before I go on to the Independent Commission, um, the uh, just to go back to fatal shootings, you know, we, we are now calling for a Royal Commission. We are now calling for all kinds of you know other uh, checks and balances to really investigate. And I think, and I really do hope that the the, the three or the four person team, you know, which includes three of my former uh, colleagues, former commissioners, Tun um, Hanev, Denison J. Surya, and Michael Yo, I really hope that they will also come out with recommendations as proper procedures because in the existing uh, system the chief justice if he or she hopefully one day it will be a she sees fit to investigate uh, do a run an inquest they can do it they don't have to wait for public outcries they don't have to wait for mm -hmm. you know the families to go in they can simply say look there's something wrong here and as a chief justice let's have an inquest immediately you know this sort of you know that there that, that, that isn't a kind of a you know instinctive and institutionalized response mm. is not there. You know, yeah, it's always about to, yeah. as yeah as, as opposed, opposed to, to always being in a, rea a reaction, a reaction and defensive and so on. That is why it's so important to have the commission, the mm. independent commission, um, because there has to be a check and balance. What's stopping us from political will? You know, when I was in the commission, very often it was the you know the police felt that why are you picking on us? You know, look, we are doing so much, and it's true. I must admit, Fami, for the first time when I was in the commission, you know, when I went into a police station for the first time, I was now looking at the desk. I was looking at the police officer. I was looking at the environment, and there are broken chairs, there are broken typewriters, there are no computers. You know, it's a mess, and the police the stations. I mean, they really need to be enhanced, you know, to have a better working environment. This plain office equipment. How can a, a police person or any person feel good about his work when his environment just in his office is really in yeah. shambles? So yeah, I think while I, be, I became quite sympathetic at the limited resources, the lack of skills, the need for, you know, proper leadership too, the political will is not there. You know, that it is has always been, we know best, no one should check on us. Look at customs, they are equally corrupt. Yeah. Look at immigration. True. Yeah. It's true. But we're not giving guns to everybody. Sure. You know, I mean, they are in charge of public security. It is really, the police act is, is a, it's an enormous act that can control all our lives. Right now, even as we sit here, you know, a policeman, if he thinks that something suspicious is going on, yeah. he has a right to enter, you know, okay. the, the space and find out what's going on. Yeah. It's a huge, it's a so. huge responsibility and a lot of power. So I think who wants to give up power, right? Who wants to give up that kind of power? Mm. And so it's really important. That's why I think we need to really educate people, the voters, to say, let's have, we need a commission. Okay. doesn't matter whether you're ready, we are ready. Got you know? it. Okay. Vignes' family is ready. Aminul Rashid's family is Aminu ready. Rashid's family. And don't forget the, 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 the doctor family. who was also killed, yeah. who was, you know, was caught, uh, who was, you know, was in a car and he sped off because for yeah. whatever reasons, and they, he was shot. So there have been many, many fatal shootings. Okay. Thank you so much, Ivy. Welcome. Thank you.